Can everybody see that okay? Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, should we all say it together? Yeah, I think we can, we can start. Do you prefer us to mute ourselves so that you don't distract it or? Oh, no, I don't mind. Do you want, do you want me to lead it? I'm not sure. If we all say it together, it might be a bit of an echo. Yeah, I'll read it for you, JL. Thank okay, you, yeah, yeah, that, that would be nice. Thank you. Okay, Shirley, any time. Tuya <laughs> Kite fail. Ya o marama. Ti hei mauri. Yoha. Thanks for doing that. Good. So I think we have our uh, people are joining. I guess it's a bit in um it's teaching period for some of us, right? But the the whole event is recorded. So hopefully more people will watch it afterwards. So I've got a list of questions. Everyone is uh, free to send more questions. We have about an hour. We'll try to be as equitable as possible. So just uh, keep the answer like relative, like long enough to get your ideas, but short enough so that we all have the time to answer the questions. Yes? Down here. Yeah. Okay. So I think something last week it was um Louise, can you mute? someone needs to mute, yeah. Yeah. Can you mute some can some can the person with the host I'll, I'll go check who's on to you zoom one and i'll try to mute you but you keep guys keep going okay that's yeah okay so um i think that most of the question we got were about the strategy so i think we'll start the first question with <laughs> it's really disturbing sorry so we first First question, jail and then hater and then vice versa. That's all cool. It's just because that's the way you are on my screen. So most of the questions are about the, the strategy. And so the first question we had is like, what would be for you the next step now that we have the strategy more or less uh, written? So jail. Oh, kia ora everybody. Um, thank you for being here. Thank you, Heather. Um, thank you, Fred, and thank you to Sarah um, for organising this hui. Um, yeah, so I've been a part of the um, designing process for this particular strategy. Um, and I was also a part of the last phase in terms of te koeke. And I saw when we were designing the, um, the gender equity strategy, I saw the need to include um, the principles of te koeke, because I saw that we, when we were initially designing it, it was, um, we were trying to make it fit into te koeke and not trying to make te ko, not deriving it, not deriving our principles or values from te koeke. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to mention that. But um, the next steps would be, thank you, Diane, um, would be trying to educate our membership um about the strategy and what what it means exactly um so pretty pretty similar um to te koeke in that you know they've been able to provide um examples on what each um value or objective means 
um, and so that so that when our membership are out in the sector or you know in yeah in their workspace are able to um, demonstrate or model um, the values or objectives. Hmm. That would. Joha, thank you. Thank you. Isa. Kia ora katoa. Thank you for having this um, wonderful opportunity to uh, meet with everybody and, and speak a little bit. Um, and Jael, it's great to <laughs> be with you on this. Um, I wasn't sure what exactly um, the format was going to be, so I just thought since uh, Jael, Jael, you might be a bit more familiar uh, with everybody, that I might just give a little bit of background, is that all right, of who I am, popping out from nowhere? <laughs> um, right, so uh, kia, I would like to say kia ora katao, uh, ko nangataha te manga, ko le Rotorua te awa, ko no California, Rotorua ahau, um, ko Air New Zealand te waka, ko vel tako whanau, whanau. Uh, and ko Heather Toko Inua. And so, um, Namihi Nui Kia Koto. Uh, I'm in recognition of the first day of Tuwiki Otereo Maori. Um, I'm just incorporating this into everything. So, just wanted to talk a little bit about that. Um, and I'm also appreciative there was somebody. Um, thank you to Lois for nominating me for this. And again, I have been working with the local branch as the women's representative, but I have not been on the committee, nor have I designed what you have, Jail. Um, but uh, I've appreciated this opportunity in a sense to kind of look at what matters um, to me and in relation to those that I have been serving uh, alongside. And I wanted to present a little bit of my authentic self in order to put that forward. Um, I've given, uh, you know, a lot more than I do about what the needs are. My background also, um, I, I came with my family to Aotearoa in 2008. I have two children and a husband. Um, and, and my first part in education was with a um, uh, diploma in bicultural journalism. And I came with a journalism background, so I'm much better at listening than um, telling my story. Uh, so I think what I'd like to do is be able to listen to what people are um, needing and what people are wanting. And as far as going forward with um, Koiti, I think having um, some of those principles and those and those the focus on those issues that you've presented is something that we'll need to bring um, into dialogue and make people that are working really hard uh, aware of that, so that we could come together as a group and be able to um, kind of take ownership of the part of the process in not only, as you say, modeling that, but um, living that and making uh, an advocacy for uh, equality, for change. Um, yeah, so that's, that's, that's a start. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and I've, Apologize that I forget to ask you to introduce yourself. So, Jael, do you want to briefly introduce yourself as well? Yeah. Oh, hey, look, everybody. I'm I'm sorry for not introducing myself um, <laughs> formally, but I feel like I do it all the time, and I'm, <laughs> I I feel like you might be sick of me. But um, yeah. So, um, so my name is Jael Dady, so called Jael Dady Takuingwa. Um, ko ngati kahumunuki. Here Tonga, Ki Wairarapa, um, Ko Rangitane, Ko Waikato Tainui, Ko Ngati Parau, Ko Ngati Mania Poto, Me uh, Tufare Toa, Ngati Tufare Toa, Nga Iwi. Um, so, as you can hear, I do Whakapapa to all across Ikaroa Rafati, so we know that to be the east coast of the North Island. Um, and I also fuck up to around Waikato Tainui. Um, one of the passions I hold is um, is so undertaking my fuck my genealogy, and um, 
and uh, I haven't exhausted everything yet. I haven't exhausted my whakapapa yet. Um, I'm trying to find my link into Ngaitahu, um, which is Te Wai Painamu, which is down in the South Island, but I can't find that yet. <laughs> I haven't been that fortunate. Um, I work at EIT, so Eastern Institute of Technology in Napier, um, and I work in the School of Nursing. I have two roles within the School of Nursing. One is a lecturer and the other is Kaitiaki Māori. So I'm, uh, my Kaitiaki role sees me as a facilitator of Te Ropu Whaiuranga, which is our Māori student nursing group. Um, uh, that particular group was created um, in the early 1980s because as we know then, um, Māori were a minority in terms of nurses, um, and so they needed, to, they created a support group for one another. Um, and so that particular group, you know, it sees me facilitate things like uh, weekly hui. Um, I take the students away to uh, national events that are hosted by either um, NZNO, so the New Zealand Nurses, nurses Organisations, um, the Māori branch of that, which is Te Runanga, and they host the Indigenous Conference um, annually. Um, and I also take our students to um, Hui Atou, which is um, hosted by Te Kaunihiro o Nganehi Māori, so the Māori Nursing Council, um, and, and also just regional events that may come up. Um, I'm there as their uh, Kaitiaki Māori sees me as not only their facilitator of the rōpū, but also there as a support person if they need. Um, so an example might be that, um, you know, they need to, they want to learn their pepeha, um, which we do, we learn, we, we try to um, encourage um, in weekly hui, um, you know, one student has to, has, has to give their pepeha, or, um, and just learning te reo Māori, that's that's just a norm within our rupu, um in that space um and then and that's enough on on my kaitiaki Māori role uh, it is quite a big role though um i also am course connect course coordinator within the bachelor of nursing um at, for my lecturing role um and i teach by order um i come from a primary and secondary background within english and Māori medium um i have been a part of um nzdi and also PPTA, um, and, and now yes, PEU. Um, <clears throat> I have been a member within TEU for the last, um, I think, three to four years. Um, I am a very, I, I whenever I uh, secure myself into a new role, I always join a union or the union um, and um, because we wouldn't be anywhere without unions in terms of our workspaces and what we have within our workspaces. So um, I'm a strong advocate for that. Um, and while, uh, while we're on that, I'm also a strong advocate for things Māori, um, as you can probably hear. Um, and, and I think, um, yeah, mm, I think I'll stop there. Thank you, Fred, for letting me share that. You're welcome. Um, maybe, like, HR, do you want to say a little bit more about yourself as well? Or it's, that's fine? Or? <laughs> Are you, you happy? Because I, I just thought that your, your introduction was a bit shorter, but that's fine. Um, it's up to you. If anybody has any questions, I'm happy to. <laughs> okay. To um, I, I did start, oh gosh, it have been 12 years now at the, um, uh, the ITP here. And again, starting with the bicultural journalism and going through uh, when that was eliminated from our curriculum, um, from our offerings, going into communication. And right now I'm with the uh, IT department and have done uh, quite a bit with international students. Um, I've worked with uh, colleagues and done research and presentations um, regarding how to best affect educational outcome for international students. Um, let's see. Yeah, so that's that's it for my personal and academic, unless there's any questions. <laughs> okay, so so we will go back to, to the question and this time I, I suggest Hater um, answer first. And so it's about the strategy. So what, for, <laughs> what strategy will you follow to uh, make sure that we can have a maximum impact for the strategy? 
the person who wrote that question doesn't know a lot of English, I think, but that's okay. That's me. <laughs> so Ether, how do you maximize the impact? Thank you. Um, uh, in the chat, I've just posted something because um, that makes it easier for me and I thought it might be easier <laughs> for you if you have a look. I just sort of divided into what my princi personal principles are because I realized coming to this sort of a role, um, it is political in that you want to be there for everybody, but I really value, Jill, the position you're coming from, um, where you're, you know, you're, 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 your true self, your parent, your um, fluent in Tadeo, and you're an educator, and all of those things. So yeah, I had a little bit of an opportunity to reflect on that, um, what I would bring. Um, so I've got my own principles, how I would see a uh, focus on the uh, NWC and the TEU collective, and then also kind of uh, the main goals, and that's what you had um, had asked for in those. Let me make sure that went through. Has that gone through? <laughs> Thank you, Lois. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. So um, as far as the principles go, I'll just quickly go through those and then I'll skip down to the, the main goals. Um, I do think that especially in uh, today with uh, Black Lives Matter, um, the, the gender, gendered impact of COVID, we really do see that the co social contract that we're all living within is constantly being negotiated. Um, so I, I'm very aware of that, and I'm I'm willing to to go the, you know go the distance for that. Um, and I do think in constant change, it is um, looking at how to maximize that creative potential, and that could be whether it's looking at your learners or you're looking at an organization trying to bring the the best forward. Um, Learn it out with head, hands, and hearts. That's a principle that I feel is very holistic. Uh, it's not just learning one subject, and especially with communication, that is a curriculum that kind of does go across uh, many different areas, and uh, that's been helpful to, to see the larger picture. Um, question authority, that's part of uh, my journalistic ethos, but also where I came from as a women's studies um, major when I was small, I <laughs> went to university. Um, so it, it is important to be able to get the information out to those who are working with the information. So I do take that as an important principle. Um, accept and understand, that actually came to me in a dream not very long ago. Uh, it was kind of a vivid dream. Um, and I've been thinking about that for a wee while. And it doesn't mean uh, going against everybody you see and questioning, but it, there's a certain value in accepting and then understanding. Um, and of course, Tathagata, Hitagata, Hitagata, that's the Tangataro um, Mamarai uh, here on campus. That's one of the themes. Uh, it is about the people. So that really, uh, those are the principles that I'm kind of bringing forward to the potential. Um, the focus, it's uh, similar things that we probably all want, but I wanted to just skip down to the main goals. Um, which definitely want to strengthen and empower all of us, women in particular, Wahine, uh, looking at the action that we could all bring together when we're informed uh, on uh, the gender equality, uh, especially again, when you look at the context that we're in and how we value the work that we do. I think the um, importance of valuing women's leadership and what we bring to the role of educator can be um, something that's continually worked on and, and brought forward. Uh, so one of the main goals, I would love to be able to have a women's support group basically, kind of like this, where it would be um, an online version that we could have a, a, you know, a hui, a kororo with one another, be able to either have specific topics or um, just listen, listen to one another and share the power that we do have as a group. I think that is something that in our very busy lives we can often overlook and uh, sometimes we're fearful, especially with all the restructuring. Uh, I know we've had it here down at the Mokoya campus. Uh, once upon a time we were Wairiki and now we're um, you know, merging all over the place. So there's a lot of fear and I just think if we were to come together even for a little bit, um, it would be a nice platform to, to strengthen the effectiveness that we have. Thank you. I think, yeah, 
Thank you for answering. So, um, Jill, what would be your strategy to maximize oh, okay. the impact of the strategy? <laughs> yeah, um, I'm still trying to understand that question, Fred. But um, I'm going to, I'm going, I'm going to attempt to answer it. Um, yeah. But first off, I want to say thank you, Heather. Um, and I also want to share with our members that are that are present. Um, I think you're quite spoiled for choice in terms of um, the candidates. And um, because Heather, it seems that you've got so much to bring and, um, and I wish you all the best. Um, I really do. Um, I, I guess I, I touched on it when I, prior to me introducing myself, um, you know, that I, do, I would hope to, um, so we've got our strategy with our objectives. Um, and so what we need now is we need to be able to action those objectives. Um, because what, what I do see, um, and I see this a lot with um, educational initiatives that were designed for primary school um, and also for secondary and also within health. I see strategies or frameworks being designed, but they're not being actioned. And that's because, for example, these frameworks are designed, yes, and we've got Māori so we've got these Māori frameworks being designed um, and yes, there are Māori voice within those frameworks, which is fantastic because it never used to be like that once upon a time. The policies were designed by non-Māori for Māori. Now they're being designed with Māori, non-Māori with Māori for Māori. Um, but our non-Māori whānau don't know how to action what is inside these frameworks. So we've, we've designed this beautiful strategy gender equity strategy. Now let's provide our membership with examples of what those objectives can look like within their workspaces. Um, I also would like to um, look at, oh, I, would, I would like to, to see um, our branch presidents and also whoever sits alongside them on, the, on, you know, on their, um, so say for example at EIT we have our committee, I would like to see them um, actioning te koeke alongside our gender equi equity strategy within the negotiations. What does that look like? Um, ensuring that, you know, everything is, and I don't want to refer to it as a tick box, but I want them to, to be able to relay back to, to all um, how, how that took place in their negotiations. Um, hmm. I think that's yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I think I think you did you did understand the question. Oh, thank you, Fred. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and I think um, the, the the other question. So so I guess in some ways you you answered the the, the, the next question, which was really what was the main goal, but. Uh, what's the main goal that you want to to achieve over those two years, right? So. Um, um, is there anything you want to add about the main goal? Is that if there is one thing that you want to have to be remembered for in some ways? Sorry, um, is, that, is that to me, Fred? Oh uh, yeah, we can for start back with carry yeah. on. Yeah, okay. yeah. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, what would I like to be remembered for? So you know, in my okay. Okay, in my for lifetime. Two years for, for the two year period. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll try. I'll try. <laughs> okay, so in my lifetime, look, I don't know if I'm going to see it, but I would love to see a bicultural nation. And what that looks like to me is um, everybody that chooses to live in Aotearoa um, to speak te reo Māori fluently, speak te reo Pākehā fluently. Um, for me, that meets their obligation to the treaty one obligation, while while there are many within that obligation, but for me that that they're showing their they're meeting their obligation to te tiriti o waitangi, but also because our language te reo Māori is the is the window into our world, right? And so for me that would be the utmost. I would love to see it in my lifetime, but you know what? I'm going to work my butt off for my children to see it in there. Um, Another thing, so on that, so in the next two years, I guess it's coming back to, yeah, I would like for Te Koike to be one of the main documents that our branch presidents, that our committees, that all our memberships 
uh, members, members within TAU are using, but also our gender, strength, um, our gender equity strategy um, using. And I want them to be able to um, use it like how we do with our Western policies. Um, you know, we don't even resort to any paperwork now. We just know. And so what I would like for, for some, yeah, I would like for our strategy to be used without, I guess, I, no, I want it to be normalised. Yeah, I want everything within it to be normalised. Um, yes, and I think I'll stop there. Thank you, Fred. Okay, Heather, what would be your thing? Okay, thank you. Um, kia ora, Jail. That was, that was really nice. And I think what you're touching on is, as we keep hearing the new normal, what is that? And I think it's an awesome opportunity to, to, to build forward, to have um, Te Koyoti as the guiding document that does become uh, what we're all working from. Um, it is a framework that we can use. Um, so I, I agree with, with you there. I, I guess uh, my goal would be, it would be to establish a women's support group. Um, maybe those are crude terms and we could call it something else. But I would like to have a, an active, viable um, dialogue that is, and it's not just for women um, at, at all, but it would be on um, issues that are important. And there could be some uh, sections that were just for females if we wanted to have a safe space. Uh, and I completely uphold that. But I think having a dialogue and a place for that dialogue is so important because we can, and I see it with um, people around me, colleagues, we, we do get lost, we do get fearful, and we don't necessarily feel, we don't even want to ask anybody, what do you, what do you make? What is your... Um, income. You teach the same thing that I teach, or you teach something similar. Um, so we, we're kind of cloistered apart from each other. And so I'd like to break those, you know, those cages down a bit more and just go forward on the on the um, the shared sense of gender and have a regular support online group that will also, of course, build into action and joining on the steps of parliament for issues that we see are important. Yeah. Thank you. So there is uh, one last question in, in, in the question that um, were sent uh, beforehand. And uh, so it's what's the, um, how do you see, uh, what's your strategy for the development of the National Women Committee? So how do you see it evolving over the next two years? If that's the me. Yeah, is that the meaning of the question, right? Yeah. So yeah, so what's the intended strategy for the development of the um, National Women Committee over the next two years? And um, we will um, start with Ether. It relates to the previous question, obviously. But. Okay, thank you. Um, the first answer is I don't know. I think if I was to be nominated, uh, accepted or voted in, I would want to talk with everybody and find out what the um, consensus would be. Of course, to be, to be stronger, and of course, to have the guiding document of um, Te Koiti as part of the framework. Um, so yeah, just, just build, you know, build better, the new normal, but be very strong and, um, and work for changes, not just for discussions, but also for, for real change. Thank you. Joel. I feel like my kōrero has, has touched on that particular question, um, but what I can add to that is um, I wouldn't want to come in, oh thank you Heather, sorry, thank you for your kōrero. Um, what I would add to that is, um, you know, okay, so I've been a part of the NWC and I, I love it, I love it, I love the relationships within the committee, um, I love the opportunity I love that my my voice counts, and I I love that everybody is there for um, the same reason that we are we are advocating for women. Um, and so from that, if I was to build on that, I I would 
obviously continue the things that I'm loving because I I I am feeling that from from each committee member. Um, but I would I would you know because I my strengths are in and I want for everybody to have this as a strength. Uh, they are derived from Te Māori. I would I would want to share my strengths with them um, because what we what we model as a committee um, will only um, be, a, I guess, a demonstrator for, for other committees that sit within TEU, but also we will then, it flows on to other unions and they need that. They ne the NZDI definitely need it. Um, PPTA, I mean, they're, they're not too far behind, but they're still behind. Um, they, need, they need it too. And so I would propose things like tikanga, um, definitely more te reo Māori, and I would, I would want to carry on the vision that we are seeing, from, uh, that, we, that is proposed from our framework to Koeke. Yeah. That's Thank it. you. Thank you, Fred. And um, I think that um, we, we are at the end of the question that were requested beforehand, so I would like to open the floor to uh, anyone here. We're not that many, so it would be easy. So does anyone has a question for both Jill and Aether? Mm. Luke? Oh, Shirley? Yeah. I, I, I will. It might be a little bit off track. Um, but just wondering, um, in terms of the Te Kohe, um framework um, and how some of us understand uh, what that is, how do you think we could socialise this more um, to um, our, 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 our female members of Te Uepu in the future? The, oh, thanks. Kia ora, Shirley. Thank you. Um, so, are you talking? So, we're talking about our Te Uepu committee right now. No, so, no, so just oh. the, the Te Koeke framework that you mm. both talked about. Um, we, we know what it is, but the broader membership often don't. So, how would you socialise that to the yes. broader? Use it, use it. Okay. Yeah, sure. Using, oh, sorry. Go for sorry. it. So, yeah. Jill and then Ethan, yeah. I, because, okay, um, you know, it's still quite in its infancy stages in terms of being released um, and, or introduced. I mean, it only came out last year. But what I, what I appreciate about that framework is that it provides our, our, our whānau Māori as well as our non-Māori whānau um, with examples of how to action how to action the objectives within, what it looks like, what it can look like in their spaces. And for me, I think that's a biggie because I think that's where we kind of, I mean, like, if I look at other examples, say, for example, Te Whare Tapawha. Te Whare Tapawha, the Māori health model came out, yes, and then we, it gave us, you know, um, it gave us uh, definitions of each, each uh, dimension. But it didn't really give us the um, examples of what it looked like because we need some people. I mean, as you know, Shirley, we all learn differently. But some people need specific examples, and then it flows on from there. Um, in terms of, and so I guess going back to what I was saying before, you know, our our um, objectives within the our next step could be, okay, let's let's start. Let's kind of put that into a framework or design a framework now, um, so then we can provide our membership with specific examples on what it looks like, and then they know um, that they are actioning actioning it or actioning those objectives. I think okay, and I too want to just include, um, and I can't remember the title of it, but it was such a great resource. And I think it was um, Dr. Peter Sharple said that was one of the, the designers or creators of this particular initiative. It provided um, new, new teachers um, with um, 
examples of how to action, te, uh, what was it? Pa, Pataiako, I think it was called. Um, it provided new teachers with specific examples, you know, on how they were going to meet the teaching professional um, criteria. So then they were able to become registered as teachers. And I loved that. And I think, you know, being able to design something similar um, will, will help our, our women membership, but also our men. It will also help our men to understand. Yeah. Hmm. Cool, Mathieu. Yeah, thank you. Peter. Sorry, yeah. Thank you, Jaya. That was that was good. Yeah, to action um, those initiatives, I think it does take a, again that creative potential. It's looking at what we want and how can we bring that out. I think um, when I look at to uh, coequality, you know things like afiatu um, awemai. We're looking at how we as especially when we're going through the ups and downs of change in the Institute, how can we come together and say, look, you know, I've had a bad day or I'm really worried about my position and be able to support one another. I think, again, the power of our um, unlimited nurturing female selves can be um, brought in to, to uphold one another. Um, when we look at Napiki Naheke, also that's suffrage day, we give uh, recognition of those that have come before us, those that we are now, and um, those wahine and um, uh, tane that we will have in our future. We give that recognition for the, the, the creation of humanity, as it were, uh, that women have, um, not to mention the vote. <laughs> um, so I think the, the smaller initiatives are very important and bringing in the, um, uh, the Maori curriculum have found that's worked really well, especially with international students. If you do the, the, um, the house that has the four corners, they can build in their own sense of values uh, and we take it uh, you know, next to the Maori house. And so you can see that where there is very much difference, there's also a similarity. So I think building forward on those strengths of similarity in very practical ways um, can strengthen our, our our education as well as our colleague collegiality. Thank you. Thank you. Does anyone else has a question to ask? Uh, yeah, Louise. Hi everyone. Um, my name is Louise McKenzie. I'm uh, the Vice President of the EIT branch, and I'm the Women's Rep, and I'm also on the National Women's Committee. Um, this, is, this is a bit of a, a touchy question. It's been reframed a, a couple of times because I certainly don't want to personalise it in any way. Um, you may or may not be aware, both Jail and, and Heather, that the three VPs get an, an allowance uh, from the TU. And I was just wondering if you felt uh, that there should be any parameters put in place around the spending of the VP allowance. So who wants to go first? JL. Uh, can can I, Louise, oh, sorry. I was just going to say, it's sort of a question, um, Louise, when the two ladies sort of haven't been in the position to, to know you know, what it is and how it's spent and what the history's been around that. It might be a, a little bit difficult to answer, but if you feel you can, yes, but I sort of feel it's one of those questions for after when you've been in the role and you might know a bit more about it. So just okay. thought I'd say. Thank you, Lois. Well, that, that kind of that lessens the pressure, if that's okay, Louise. <laughs> um, but I, I wasn't aware, um, but like any committee, um, yeah, you can't, I, you know, there are, okay, okay, let me just say, so for example, Te Rōpū Whaioranga, you know, we have a financial side, um, and so on that, you know, I'm on the, um, I have to monitor, monitor um, where we're spending is going, or what the girls wish, or, or, or men, if we have men, males that within our rōpū, um, wish to um, spend money on, um, but we've always got to have uh, money coming in, um, if money is going out. Um, 
you know, I would, I would hope that um, I can call on support from those that have been in the role previously to see what kinds of spending they they went or they undertook. Um, and also, I mean, you know, we're not in this role alone. We're in this role as a committee. Um, and so I, and also, and also, um, what's the new role that Sarah has walked into? Um, the women's... Uh, National yeah. National Women's Officer role, That's which it. is a staff role rather than a member role. Yeah, yeah. absolutely, absolutely. Um, so, but I would also, you know, I would call on support from others um, in terms of how that that um, money is being spent. Mm. Thank you, Louise. Yes, sir. Thank you, Louise and, and Lois. Um, I guess my answer would be very similar. I, I don't know. <laughs> I would like to know what has gone on. I think transparency would be important. Um, it's certainly um, not a job that I would take for the money, but I appreciate that that would need to be something that was handled carefully. Um, also, I think it does, in a way, motivate, personally, it would motivate me to make sure I did, you know, 110 percent, um, but I but I I'm unaware of, of anything that has to do with um, few, uh, previous situations. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, so, do we have more questions? We still have about 15 minutes. We may have want to finish like five to so 10 minutes. So, do we have any more question for Jill and Nita? No. No more questions? Am I allowed to finish off? Am I allowed to say something? Yeah, I was going to say that you could have each like a couple of minutes to kind of summarize. You, you haven't made our life easier, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Both of you, I mean, but um, yeah, so just um, go ahead, Joel, and then Ita, if that's okay with you. Thank you. Oh, that's a good thing, Heather. Um, <laughs> um, I just wanted to say, look, you know, like while I might seem like I'm a strong advocate for for, for things Māori, um, te ao Māori, you know, I, I would like for you to to um, appreciate and understand that, you know, what works for Māori can work for non-Māori. And um, for me, I look at that like a win-win. Yeah, yeah, and I, I just want to finish off saying that because um, if we can, if we can, so if, for example, if I'm demonstrating, you know, the viewpoint from a bilingual perspective, as I do, and I'm demonstrating that to our non-Māori whānau, our whānau Māori, they just know it, they do, um, but our non-Māori whānau, and within this sector, we know that Māori are a minority, which is very unfortunate because the, the numbers Māori that are coming through tertiary education are only going to get bigger. And by a certain, certain year, um, you know, I think it, I, I can't fully remember the year, it might be 2030, 2035, um, our Māori population is going to be quite large. And are we prepared for that? The ECG. Well, next, uh, you know, are we prepared for that? Is you know our, our, our non Māori yeah. whānau prepared? You know how, um, and so, like, for me, you know, I, I would hope yeah. that what oh. what what I'm advocating for here so is a. Room. Oh, sorry, it's quite. Yeah. It's a um, bit of a disruption. Yeah. 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 Okay. Thank you. Sorry, I didn't quite finish, but I think... Oh, yeah, no, just go for it. Then, then keep going, sorry. I oh. think, no... Um, I just wanted to say, yeah, what works for Māori works for non-Māori, and if our, our non-Māori whānau can, can come on board with that, um, they are only... Not only will they be doing our whānau Māori a favour, but they'll be doing Aotearoa in general all a favour. Uh, not a favour. Um, be doing it good. Um, that's what I mean. Yeah. Mm. 
Thank you, everybody. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Kelha. Heather, so do you want to summarize, finalize? <laughs> Um, uh, thank you, Fred, and thank you, Jaya. That it's really good to hear. Um, and I just want to say, especially in light of uh, Tereo Maori Week, uh, when I first came to New Zealand and was teaching with the um, bicultural journalism, one of the women who really struck me and I had spent some time with was by a Katrina Daniels, and she has passed um, since. But she taught Tadeo at the time. And she, um, you know, um, Kat, she was very large and just full of love. But she also had a real, um, a real critical eye, <laughs> which I loved. And she would tell about her, her lens was kind of like the old ways. And she would look at the students and most of them um, in that department were, were Maori. But I loved the way she addressed that and, um, and upheld herself very matri matrilineal. I think she had a, um, uh, a partner who was from the South Island <laughs> and loved rugby, um, Monty Daniels, if you know, he was, he was a character. But, you know, she really said uh, to, to move slowly and listen to the world. And so sort of what you were saying, Jael, um, again, being completely Pakeha, um, but I appreciate that perspective and being able to go in this tumultuous world and very frightening um, job situation for many. Um, to go slowly and listen to the world is, is part of that. And so the last thing I'd like to say, um, this was something that Lois and I worked on. We're looking at the Women's Suffrage Day this coming up this week, um, 18th of September. <clears throat> and one of the things we're saying to our uh, Wahine is, May you be like a spring rain with a touch of lightning. So I hope that's whoever um, ends up wherever we end up, if that's, if that's how we can all take our roles and responsibilities going forward. So thank you, Tanaka. Thank you. So thank you to both of you. Um, if anyone, nobody else has a question? No? So I think, thank, thanks. So what's really nice to know a bit more about the two of you, especially you, Ether, for those of us who are on the National Committee because we don't, didn't know you too much. And um, I, I really hope that at least both of you will be on the National Women Committee next year. That's for sure. Unfortunately, I'm not allowed to be, so I'm missing out. And um, But really thank you to spend the time to um, show, share with us uh, your vision. So thanks a lot for that. And um, I think we can close now. And Shirley, do you want to close off with the Weata? Karakia, sorry. You are on mute. Clearly. Do you want me to close with the Weata? You actually don't want me to sing. You're all just go home. <laughs> does anyone else want to? Like, I cannot sing either. But, so does anyone else want to close off? No. Shirley, then you, you will have to do it. I will. I'll do okay. it. Okay. Okay. Go for it then. Thank you. Um would uh would you like me to share it on the screen so everyone else can read alongside? Yes, yeah? please. Okay. Just just load my settings. Hang on a minute. Okay. Uh keep Kia whakarongo a ke au, kia, oh, ki te tangi a te manu nei, a te mātui, tui, 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 tui a, tui a i runga, tui a i raro, tui a i waho, tui a i roto, tui a i te here tangata, ka rongo te pō, ka rongo te ao, tui a i te muka tangata, i tākea mai i, i, kawaiki, i, i hawaiki nui, i hawaiki roa, i Hawaiki pā mau mau. O tira, me era atu anō Hawaiki, te hono a wairua, whakaputa ki te whai au, ki te au marama, ki hei mauri ora. Thank you. Yeah, I did say white at first, but then I correct myself. Sorry, Shirley, that I freaked you out. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Have a lovely week. And... Um, 
um, hope to see you soon again. Thank Bye. You. Bye.